early Saturday morning look early Saturday morning in Catherine's garden this is what comes out of the garden from the garden I'm able to express myself I have a vision of the garden and the things that I see and from it I'm able to produce art Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Catherine's Garden. I hope all is well with you today. Well, today is a beautiful, warm Saturday in August, and the birds are cackling. They seem to be happy. And there was a crow somewhere around here. I don't know what's up, but it's a beautiful morning. Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Catherine's garden how are you today I hope all is well with you well today is a beautiful day in the garden it's Saturday and it's an easy Saturday morning this morning uh, the canna is continues to flower and here I have a new bloom peeking out And the other one is doing very, very well. It is opening up, showing its beauty, shining and glistening in the sun. I think that it has been worth it to buy this canna and go through the process even if it's just for that flower what a great reward at the end of the process now at this time in the season I hope that more will pop up more flowers will uh, rise out of the leaves definitely something to look forward to now if I had put it in the garden it would be too far away from me and I wouldn't really have the opportunity to look at it so closely and really observe it but because it's right here on the deck with me I'm able to uh, take the time to follow the progress I'm looking at it almost every single day I should say every day <laughs> and watering it and caring for it tending it for it it's amazing basil continues to do well and right now this basil that's in this plant though is starting to flower I think I'm going to leave it and let it begin to flower so that I can then collect seeds from the basil the deck on the whole is looking very very nice you may be wondering what is that on the table well it is my bath mat I created it during the winter months painted it from acrylic paints then I have an art shop on society6.com 
and there they can take your prints and make them into bath mats, cards, other prints to put on the wall, framed artwork, you name it. They can put it on shirts and different things. So this is what it looks like here. But I was amazed that when I brought it out here because I wanted it to dry in the sun, that it matches the color scheme of the pillows on the chairs and the color scheme of my garden. And I did this before I purchased these, uh, these pillows. To me, the butterfly represents transformation, change, and I call it joy butterfly because, you know, I find joy in the garden and butterflies give me a lot of joy. So I just wanted to share this with you. And I have other artwork from the garden on society6.com. So you can check it out. As I said, I'll leave the link below. During the winter time is when this butterfly was uh, created, was painted. And it was in memory of the garden. My garden is important to me and it gives me joy, not just now, but it leaves an impression on my mind and it allows me to be creative. So from the garden, I'm able to create artwork, videos, and my Instagram pictures, <laughs> and a host of other things. From the garden, you can allow your creative and inner self to flow with um, innovation. My artistic side comes out even just in the design of the garden, the color scheme. It brings it all out. And I believe that we as human beings were meant to create and to innovate to build, to make. It is almost a form of our own self-expression. And um, I'm out here uh, just walking around and enjoying the garden. Yes, these days in August are almost over. Could you believe it? August is almost over, but we are here in the garden. And um, I already have mums in my garden. Check that out. The mums are here. And I have just been admiring them. They've been opening up as the time continues. Yeah, look at that, the color. The garden is doing very well. In the Saturday morning light. So I've done some work on this bed here. 
You remember how I said that I like to work on the garden section by section? Well, I decided to work on this section of the bed, of the garden. <laughs> the impatience are doing very well this year. For the past couple of years, there have been like a sickness, some kind of disease on the impatience, so that around this time they would start to wither away. But right now, I'm thankful. They're the feature plant. <laughs> They're carrying the garden right now for this August sunny Saturday. I have been very concerned about these dahlias. I did not prop them up in the beginning and kind of allow them to die back. Well, you know, drop down like that, fall over. And so now I'm paying the price for it. But I was able to get these tomato cages. I don't know if you can see it from the side here. And put them here. And I pulled up the dahlias. Hopefully they will grow erect and start to flower. You know what I'm impressed with are these. These are alliums and they're going to seed right now. They're called drumstick alliums. They look so nice here, partnering with the rhododendron leaves. My rhododendron is creating some new fresh leaves. And I also see some buds on this one. So that's a promise of having flowers for next spring. Check out the bee balm. The bee is enjoying the bee balm. It's amazing because I had just taken a little piece from the front garden, the bee balm in the front, and I put it here and created this patch. I'm glad I did because it's giving a little color here serving a good purpose. The hydrangea flower lasted. The flowers are doing okay there. They're changing colors and um, they're just maintaining that 
look. I am pleased with that. Now this here is Sedum Autumn Joy. It's Sedum Autumn Joy. It's still green, but it's going to turn a rustic kind of uh, reddish color eventually. Well, it is a warm, happy Saturday morning. And so I'm so glad to be able to, yeah, take you around and give you a tour of my garden, my urban cottage garden. And more and more it's starting to look just like that, especially because of the fact that we're in the middle of the dog days of summer. Yes, August heat and humidity, but yet we've had a drought, uh, but yet we've been watering. I mean, the poor plants have been going through so many changes, but yet the garden still uh, shines. So I want to show you my garden. I want to show you the different beds and what I've been doing to help them along as they, um, you know, continue to mature and develop for the season. My garden is not as immaculate as I would like it to be. It has been hot and very dry. That's why I kind of allowed it to become overgrown so that the all of the plantings can cover the soil and keep the moisture in the ground. This way they're still able to uh, bloom, have some color, some life. I think they're still doing very, very well. All of my zinnias. The tomatoes are still producing. And there are still shots or places where things are just looking extremely beautiful within different uh, um, sections. Like I love how my zebra grass is showing up in the garden this year. Usually it's really, really tall because of all of the rain that it gets. and. Um, Sometimes it, it can look out of hand, but this year, I think it's picture perfect with the Arbor Vitae, the Unwanimus, and the companion plants. Now, looking at this section right here, it's mostly variegated plants and a green but yet it's it's calm it's beautiful 
I love it. The other thing is that I want to introduce you to a plant called purple perella and it is a weedy seedy thing. However, it brings so much beauty to the garden at this time. So I want to give you a tour around looking at the purple perella in different parts of the garden, in different beds, and uh, seeing how it just shines even in, um, you know, each bed, even in different situations. This bed is also doing very well. Uh, check this out these are the drumsticks the allium drumsticks I cut back this rose bush here and I still have some more to go but it is reflowering anyway So when I cut it back, it develops new growth and uh, a new flower shows up as well. So that's what I'm going to need to do here is cut this back and let new growth come forth. But I'm just pleased with this early Saturday morning look, early Saturday morning in Catherine's garden. The nasturtium. Dahlia. Now this is purple perella and it's an edible plant. It's found in Asian cuisines. Now I really haven't tried it but to me it reminds me of basil. It's part of the basil family. I really love how it looks in the garden. It is a seedy weedy plant and it will grow everywhere if you let it get to seed. So this year I didn't want it to be all over the garden so what I did was I pulled it out which I should have left it alone because my coleus that I was looking for for the color um, to add extra color died off during that hard frost that frost that happened in May and um, but the purple perella hung around it came up <laughs> and now it is just adding that punch that color that I need in the garden right now I placed it or allowed it to grow in different parts of the garden. See, like right here. Isn't that pretty? The purple perella next to the hydrangea. And you can 
can see it right here. So I want to introduce you to a sedum that I um, have in my garden that brings back fond memories of my aunt Tanti, who was like my grandmother and who I lived with for a little bit. Yeah. So uh, we're going to do that as well. My sedum is starting to change color and gain some pink. This sedum is very special to me. My aunt, Tanti, who I lived with, she was like a grandmother to me. This sedum was in her garden. And I, um, I took a piece of it from her garden uh, when she passed away. And I wanted to make sure that I had it in my garden so that I could remember her by. The, you know, having the sedum in the garden. So now I'm talking about it because the f of the fact that I have this sedum here to remind me of her love for gardening. see the purple perella tucked back there. And it's throughout this bed, my urban cottage garden or city cottage garden, however you want to describe it. I just want to introduce you to my artwork. Yeah, this is my butterfly. And you know, the butterfly is very uh, symbolic. It, it means uh, rejuvenation, transformation. And at this time of the year, that's what we need. We need to develop and become all that we can be. We need to be ourselves. And have you ever heard of the butterfly effect? When the butterfly flaps its wings, it causes a reaction all around the world. So when we are positive, when we do good things in our garden, it may not seem like much, but it is causing uh, great things to happen. Your little bit makes a difference. That's what I, I can see from the butterfly. And that if each and every one of us is who we are supposed to be, then, you know, and we're true to ourselves and being our best selves, then things are going to happen. Yep. It just takes your little bit, my little bit, and us all together to change the world. So, you know, it's a good thing. I thought that this, having this here, um, I didn't mean to. I was just putting it out, my bath mat, to get some sun and dry out a little bit. But then it just spoke to me here in the garden. And I recognized the fact that this is part of the color scheme here in the garden. The butterfly um, color scheme here is similar to the color scheme that I have right here on the deck with the deck pillows and even the plantings and the different um, containers and things. You can find the colors in my butterfly. And it wasn't intentional because I actually um, painted this butterfly uh, in the winter time. And that's what I do in the winter 
um, I think about the garden and I'm longing for the garden that I'm willing to um, take out my paints and to start to paint in the garden. Yeah. <laughs> Not paint in the garden, but paint the garden. That's what I do. I imagine. I use my imagination to paint in the garden, paint my thoughts. I put myself in the garden in my thoughts and then I um, paint it out on the canvas. Yeah. So that's what I wanted to share with you today as well. And you can find my artwork on society6.com backslash Catherine Constant. I will leave the information in the description below. So take a look at that. So I am just um, thankful for this Saturday morning and uh, to see how uh, things are developing and also to have the sun shining um, here today. And I hope that you will have a wonderful, wonderful Saturday and a wonderful weekend. Or whenever you watch this video, I hope that you will have a great day. Well, I hope that everything's going well for you in your garden. And if you'd like, leave a comment down below. What are you doing? What are you creating? What are you being? being? What are you doing with your life? And um, are you setting out positivity like the butterfly so that we can have more and more butterfly effects going across the world? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so leave a comment down below. And uh, just you know enjoy your garden get out there and relax enjoy the sounds of the garden and um, you know allow joy to come in your heart yeah that's why oh I didn't tell you the title of this but of this painting this is but joy butterfly joy butterfly that's who this is joy butterfly <laughs> You could guess, huh? I know you could guess that that's probably the name of the, the painting, Joy Butterfly. Yeah, because that's what I get in my but my garden, joy. I experience a lot of joy in the garden. so much for watching if you have not subscribed to Catherine's Garden of LWS then I am inviting you to come and be a part of my garden tours and garden experiences I try to give some little um, inspiration tips and gardening tips inspiration and joy so come on and be a part of Catherine's Garden See you next time in Catherine's Garden. Bye. Catherine's Garden and thank you so much for watching. Bye!